Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm talking about Flask versus Django, the age-old question of the two most popular frameworks for Python. So these guys have a lot in similarity, just in, in the simple fact that they're both written in Python, which is a popular open source programming language. They're both open source and they're both relatively old and stable. So which one is easier to set up? A lot of people will tell you that Flask being minimalistic is a much easier web application to work around. And while I actually do agree with that, it is a much easier web app application. There's not as much code surrounding it. In this example here, you can see how to actually get a working web application going and just a few lines of code. And with Django, it, there's much more boilerplate code that is going to be brought into your project. Now, the thing that this hides is that Flask is quite a bit of boilerplate there that you're importing. That's the actual core Flask project. But by doing the import and then just a little bit of lines of code, you can interact with the Flask framework and here it runs uh, the server on Windows. So this is the basic hello world. Now Django on the other hand is a much more, like I said, larger framework. So the first thing you're going to do, and I didn't really show this in the last one, is that you do have to install both Flask and Django. Uh, although I did the, Jang the Flask config where I don't really show too much config on the Django side here. Uh, but this is the boilerplate command line interface that comes with Django that you use to create a project. And then once you have this project with a lot of boilerplate code, you can then run the built-in web server that comes with Django. But in the same few simple lines and steps of code, we were able to run both a Django and a Flask application r relatively easily. But we all know that the complexities of web development is not simply around what is the easier one to simply set up. Like the code and complexity is always around the business model and what type of website you're trying to create. So the question really boils down to like if I were going to try to create like a simple blog or something like that, if I didn't need user authentication authorization, I've kind of been saying this for a long time, I'm probably just going to go with Flask. Otherwise, if I need to ha have customers, I'm going to maintain... Um, business tran transactions like monetary transactions and I'm probably going to go with Django if I'm if I'm really serious about my product and it's more than um, a prototype any sort of prototypical type of application I'm definitely choosing Flask it's just because of the minimal framework now you could choose something even more minimal like Bottle Bottle is even more simple the entire framework for Bottle is actually written uh, in one file. So if you really wanted to, the simplest framework, you could actually use Bottle. But this video is not really about that. Django is a full featured framework that has a ton of support behind it, uh, a ton of money. There's a lot of major companies that are using it. Pinterest originally was started on it. Discuss, the popular commenting platform, at one time was serving a billion requests a month using Django. Instagram still uses Django for all their back end services and everything. So I know Washington Post at one time used it. Django was originally created as uh, a news type of news friendly blog type format. So when it comes to an actual blog, I honestly think Django wins in that too, because that is what Django excels at. Django was written around uh, having an admin to create content. So if I'm creating any sort of content machine, movies, website, uh, even a programming website, if I were going to create Stack Overflow or something like that, probably going with Django because it has so much support that I need out of the box. A lot of these companies end up growing and outgrowing their frameworks uh, or creating custom extensions to them. And sometimes they'll make them open source tools. Um, like you've seen like with things like Airbnb, they use tools like React and they've actually uh, contributed open source tools like Enzyme and things like that that are used to then unit test react so there that's the first example i could come up with i know it's javascript and react speaking but the same thing happens with python and django and python and flask with different companies open source projects i actually contribute to a flask sitemap project one time as well as django now when we look at jobs if we were to search for django and typically django the only thing that's going to come back is the framework you're going to get roughly 2,000 open jobs in the United States right now for Django Web Framework. If we type Flask, you're going to get roughly 1,200. So there's more jobs in Django right now than Flask, and I've actually seen that personally speaking as well. So if we were to fully type this out, I'm sure we'd get somewhat similar results. Uh, much less jobs, but it's much more specific. And you get 
a thousand to four hundred. So that's about the same, uh, roughly. So definitely Django is going to slightly edge out Flask with Jaw. All right, now what about speed? What if, when it comes to requests per second? Where does that sit right now? Uh, Flask is slightly ahead of Django, but it's not like it's like light years ahead of it. And then when we're talking about any one of these these figures here, that the Flask and Django are relatively close, and uh, in some cases like. Django even out uh, exceeds here, so um, they're they're roughly the same speed. Now Flask itself isn't even the web framework; like it's actually built on top of another project uh, called WorkZoob, and that project is an open source project here, and it uses this WSGI. Now both Django and Flask use WSGI, which is the common way that server technologies like nginx and apache and things like that can communicate with python applications and execute them and essentially um you do have different flavors of whiskey like there's like mod whiskey and you whiskey and all this other stuff and you can read into all that stuff i'm definitely not an expert on it but they're both also similar when it comes to having to deploy um in my case to my linode environment so when it comes to community, both these languages are very mature on Django. If you look at something like Stack Overflow and we look at how many questions you have, you have roughly almost 200,000 questions for Django right now. And if we check out Flask, you're going to see roughly 72,000 questions. So the odds are that if somebody has a question out there or if you have a question, somebody had it already and that the answer is on Stack Overflow. The problem with something like Tornado, which is a really cool Python framework, like a single threaded node type of environment, that uh, the problem with that is there's no documentation and there's hardly any questions. And unless you're a really good Python developer and probably a very good developer on top of that, um, just you know, low level systems type guy, then uh, good luck trying to assemble all that stuff. You know, so like having these questions and having the community support is really important, and you can't go wrong with either Django or Flask in that regard. Now I mentioned some of the websites that are using Django and have used Django, but it would it would be unfair to uh, to not also mention some of the websites that are using Flask. And some of those websites include Netflix, Lyft, uh, Rackspace, Airbnb is also using Flask. So the reason why they like Flask is the modern approach to web development these days is building RESTful APIs. And you communicate via HTTP, whether it's through a cell phone or browser or whatever, but you're communicating through the same language of HTTP and you're transferring back and forth JSON data. And that data is then binded to um, on the client, like to like a client side framework. And Netflix is a case they're using React. So they're using Flask on the back end for their server and it's delivering data to their React front end application. And that's essentially what companies are doing. And Flask really excels at setting up a bunch of different, like, you know, Flask applications and server endpoints for microservices, which is a very popular buzz term. So even though Django outnumbers Flask with jobs, Flask has been on the rise for quite some time. So where we, I, I would imagine that that role is going to be reversed in the next 10 years where Flask will outnumber Django and jobs and popularity adoption and everything else. Um, and maybe there'll be something new and hot by then that takes away both uh, the, the market share of both of them. That's just as likely to happen, probably. But for right now, I would guess, yeah, in 10 years, they're definitely flip-flopping the positions uh, that they're currently at. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think, and have a good day. Take care. Bye.